720 WGN, Pete McMurray in for uh, Bob and Marianne. Our next guest, he's a uh, guy's guy, his movies, No Way Out, The Untouchables, uh, The Bodyguard. He won an Academy Award for Dancing with the Wolves. And this week marks the 25th anniversary of Field of Dreams. Ray, when the bank opens in the morning, they'll foreclose. People will come, Ray. You're broke, Ray. You sell now or you lose everything. Oh, man, what a great movie. He'll be back uh, hanging out in Iowa this weekend with his band, Modern West. It is Kevin Costner. Kevin, good to talk to you again. How are you? I'm good, thanks. Are you looking forward to heading back to the Field of Dreams? Yeah, I I am kind of looking forward to going back. I didn't, you know, it's not one of those kind of things I'm always looking to do, but that movie has held such a spell over America that, um, it's it's a part of my life, and going back, I'm gonna take my kids back and and uh, play in the field, and then later on, we're gonna turn the music up and play really loud. Yeah, how is your arm? They're gonna make you throw a lot of pitches, aren't they? Yeah, well, I threw a lot of pitches in love of the game, so I'll, I think I'll I think I'll be <laughs> all right. But it's it's softball; it's pretty tame. Uh, I, I wouldn't mind playing hardball, but I, I think too many people go home with injuries. <laughs> how, how many baseball movies did you do? Have I done or could I do? <laughs> uh, how many have you done? I know uh, Love of the Game, Field well, of Dreams. The ones that, I think the ones that speak the loudest are, are uh, Love of the Game, Bull Durham, uh, Field of Dreams. Um, you know, I think those really, really have kind of touched America. Well, you want to talk about one of the greatest uh, baseball movies of all time, of course, Field of Dreams. So good. When you guys were filming that, did you know at the time, man, this is a pretty special movie. You got James Earl Jones, like the voice of God telling you yeah if you build it they, they will come really, yeah they were really that that little clip you played right off the top there they're pretty fighting over my soul you know by the field sell the field by the field it, it was a it was a great scene to be a part of but when i read it i knew that it was a special movie but you don't know that something's going to turn out to be like our generation's wonderful life you you know that it has a chance to be special but the you know the problem is I'm reading this and I'm thinking okay where's the car crash where's the big battle right it, it it all boils down to a guy looking at his father saying you want to have a catch and and you know and there was a you know thousand people going well where's the beef in this movie <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> another comment goes on I mean for crying out loud every dad gets doesn't get along with his kids so what it, you know it's you know I had to endure that hear that and and certainly so did the writer director and uh, but it we made it and uh, we're all going back, which is which is really something. If uh, you're a father and you have a son, there's nothing more enjoyable, especially for me, is to play catch with my son Charlie. I love it. I love playing catch. Yeah, it's it's always nice too if it if it's not combined with a disciplinary action. So I'm gonna go <laughs> play catch. I want to talk to you about all this uh, the stuff I've been finding when your mother and I leave for the weekend. <laughs> right. Yes. Well, you know, we talk yeah, about. We, yeah, we talk about Field of Dreams, you know, James Earl Jones, Ray Liotta. But, man, when I'm watching that movie and I see Burt Lancaster in this movie, I thought to myself, wow, Burt Lancaster. Yeah, you well, want to talk about yeah. a legend. No, he really was. And him and I sat a lot and talked. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we uh, you know, I, I said something to him about a scene in the Kentucky and about when he ran across the water. And he, I remember he went, he just stopped. He goes, you saw that? You saw how I did that? And he took me all the way through, you know, how he did that. And, you know, he let, we talked for a long time, and, and he said to me one time, he said, oh, them, the studios were afraid of me. God, they were afraid of me. <laughs> he was a really, one of the really uh, legendary actors, without a doubt. And to have him in the movie was, um, was really important. And, um, and I'm glad to say, you know, we had that, we had, we're on screen together for the rest of our lives now. Yeah, that is, that is so cool. He's one of those, uh, old timers. He just has a presence on screen. Was it like that in real life when you ran into Burt Lancaster, when you worked with him? Yeah, really. You know, that's, that's the kind of part where people can make a mistake. They can go ahead and cast a character actor. Okay. Let's cast, let's cast an old kind of Doc Graham, you know, with the white hair and kind of almost the Santa Claus character if you will mm-hmm. but look what happens when you turn around and put Burt Lancaster in the same role it's the same thing as when we put Sean Connery in, in Untouchables you know we could have had an Irish beat cop found a character actor who's got the accent who's got the thing and you know McBlarney on the corner and yet we put Sean Connery in that role and look what happens to that role he wins the Academy Award but more importantly 
It's just he had an authority. God, man, you've made some great movies. You know, The Untouchables with Sean Connery. I've seen that movie 50 times. Of course, Field of Dreams, Bull Durham. When you see Bull Durham on cable, you can't turn it off, especially with Susan Sarandon. How hot was she in that movie? Well, everybody's rushing to get to the bathtub. There's no mistake about that. Yes. <laughs> Everybody's trying to get to the bathtub scene and stuff. And, and um, you know, guys, for whatever you know, they act, they act like, you know, it's the classic thing of, you know, I, I, I read Playboy for the articles. Some guys go, you know, oh, yeah, well, uh, talk to me about talk to me about the movie. What they really want to talk about is Sarandon in the bathtub. Of course. How many times did you do that scene over and over with her? Well, I did it. I messed it up as many times as I could. <laughs> um, you know, look, you get a chance in those scenes to, you know, <laughs> kiss a girl once for everybody in America and you get to kiss them once really good for yourself. Right. I love that. We're talking with uh, Kevin Coster. He's going to be at uh, Field of Dreams this weekend, the 25th anniversary celebration. And uh, you're going to have a lot of celebrities there. Timothy Busfield's coming back. He was in the movie. Uh, Dwyer Brown's going to be there. Bob Costa's coming in. Matt Lauer's coming in. I mean, this is pretty impressive. Yeah. I, I You know, it, it, it kind of lets you know that every time you make a movie, the movie has a chance. You know, right now we watch movies and all we want to know is what was number one at the box office this weekend. But really, it would be interesting to know what movies people would gravitate to 25 years from now. And so when you make a movie, you realize that you actually have a chance to, to mark America in a really interesting way. And, you know, not to get overly poetic, but that's truly the opportunity. You can make a movie, and when movies are working at their very best, they become about moments, you know, people never forget the rest of their life. And that's the power of movies. And sometimes we do it well, and sometimes we don't do it very well at all. Right. I mean, uh, uh, Love of the Game, that touched me. Field of Dreams, of course. Bull Durham. I mean, what what movies have touched you over the years? I remember being really, you know, uh, watching Cool Hand Luke when I was a kid and and feeling like, why do the cool guys have to die sometimes? You know, it's like, yeah, he seemed like he was a bit of a an anarchist. But, you know, you, I was always touched by that movie. I, I was touched by a lot of movies um, uh, where you just, you know, there's nothing quite like having the hair stand up on the back of your neck. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, you know, um, nothing quite like when you're young watching. I go, okay, I guess that's how you kiss a girl. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's like you, we learn a lot at the movies without a doubt. Right. Um, uh, Hatfields and McCoys, you won an Emmy for that. And I remember your Emmy speech and you were so passionate and you didn't have notes and you just wanted to talk about the craft a little bit. Can you expand on that? Well, you know, what do you say in that minute and a half they give you, which is kind of a bummer, you know, really, uh, the, the, and truth is they're always kind of rushing people off the stage and, you know, you make a life as a, you know, as an actor, you're, you know, let's face it. I know I've been lucky. I, I get it. You know, I, I work real hard at it, but you know, for the planets to line up and you're right there. And, you know, you want to try to find something in a minute, I guess, to say. And you don't always really know what to say. But I do believe in, 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 in the movies and, and the opportunity and, and, the, and the, the jobs that come out of it. But stories do have a chance to change people's lives. They really, really do. And, and uh, you know, I was great. I'm grateful to be an actor. You know, I'm grateful to, you know, I, you know I, I don't know that I'd have done well in an office. Mm -hmm. I just don't know. And I and I kind of found my way. And, you know, somebody gives you an award for it and you kind of go, yeah, man, this is, <laughs> this is good. And you don't want to go up there. I mean, you don't want to be an ass. You want to just go, hey, I get it. All I right. like, I love what I've been able to do, you know. Well, you got to thank your wife. You can't forget about that. That's the first thing. Well, you do. They let you go away and do these things, you know, and they understand, you know, and, and it's um, they're your partner. And, you know, one of the cool things about those shows, believe it or not, is seeing your wife dress up. It's a good it's a big time thing for them. You know, we kind of maybe think those days are over. Right. After prom, you know, but sometimes we get to take our girls and and they get to do the thing that they love most on some level, which is dressing up. And I, it, I'm not immune to what goes with all this stuff. We're talking with uh, Kevin Costner. He's going to be at the 25th anniversary of the Field of Dreams this weekend. You can go to Field of Dreams Movie Site, S I T E dot com. I'm getting text messages, of course. One of the greatest sports movies of all time, Tin Cup. Are you a good golfer? I'm not a big golfer. I like to play. I won't go out usually by myself. It takes somebody else to drag me out there. 
you know, it's uh, – but more and more I'm, you know, I'm kind of enjoying it. It's, you know, I kind of grew up in a thing where you don't go play golf on the weekend because you got your kids. You know, it's five hours out there. So I never really played golf until I made that movie. And, uh, you know, now i got to live with the idea that people think I came in second at the U.S. <laughs> Open. You know? so, so usually when I take a swing and, and doesn't really do what I really want it to do, you kind of hear the whispers behind the rope of like – He's not very good. You know, I thought he'd be better. <laughs> you know, I want to turn around and go, hey, man, you know, I can hear you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm right here, man. That was a movie. Do you yeah. get it? Yeah. Yeah, that was a movie. And uh, did, oh, Kevin Costner, you didn't grow up playing golf. Did you grow up playing baseball? Were you a good baseball player? Yeah, I did. I, I grew up in the street, you know, and your dad having to come get you when the street lights came on. He's going, didn't we talk about this, son? <laughs> when the street lights come on, you come home. So, God, I love that. Yeah, you know, I relived every World Series as a kid out in the street, you know, and, and uh, you know, you, you learn how to place it. You learn how to make teams. You learn who's fair and who's not fair. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and some live, you kind of go, you know, Billy down the street is a bit of a punk. You know, he's like, what do you mean? He's like, I mean, he makes teams so that he always wins, and you think there's no heroism in that. Right. There's no, there's no uh, there's no glory in that, and you kind of you see things in sports. Um, Kevin Costner, the last time you came to town, I think it was at the Arcata Theater. You came through here not too long ago. You played uh, in St. Charles. By the way, the Arcata, one of my favorite places for any performance in uh, in the Chicagoland area, and you keep coming back to that place. You got to love it. Yeah, well, you know, in life, is when people treat you well, you have a tendency to show up for dinner again. And it, it, that's a, that's a good. It was a it's a it's a good place for us to play. We we enjoyed it both times. And how is the band, Kevin Costner and Modern West? How is the band? Yes. How is the band? Because I've uh, I've never seen you live. Because I've always I was going to come out and see you in St. Charles. Ron, who uh, owns the place, Ron from O Shows, yeah. invited me. I had a family function going on, and Got I it. couldn't do it. Got it. But I've seen you on YouTube. I've seen you uh, on. Uh, there was something else that I saw you guys on. You can sing, man. I didn't think you could sing, but you can sing. Well, we we put out a pretty big wall of music. We play original tunes, and and um, so we play loud, and and we talk about it. You know, our songs are really, you know, sometimes are age appropriate, and sometimes are looking back in our life. You know, and we 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 play out there at the Field of Dreams this this time. You know, we're gonna, you know, the Jim Blossoms are gonna play, and and Joan Jett's gonna play, and we're gonna play right in the middle, and we're gonna just turn it up as loud as we can. And, uh, and it, it, that's, we just have a lot of fun playing, really. We play all over the world. I'm, I'm on my way to Rome. going to play Rome, Barcelona, Monte Carlo, and then, um, uh, then go up to Berlin and come home. So the band has been able to play all around the world. People kind of like our songs. Man, that is great. You're doing Barcelona and you're doing Dubuque, Iowa this weekend. you got to love that. Yeah, that's 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 perfect. You know, you know, maybe we'll go out and go fish for bluegill. I'm going to take my kids back there. So it's 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 really very American, and that's uh, no one ever no one ever kind of mistakes me for anything other than American. That's for sure. Well, when you go up to Dubuque, there's a bar called the Walnut. You need to stop by. It's near Laura's College. It's a it's a great little joint. Deal. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin Custer. Kevin, great to talk to you. I know you're uh, very, very busy, and I appreciate it. People can check out fieldofdreamsmoviesite.com for all the information. And you're going to be performing, is it Saturday? You're going to be performing on Saturday, right? That's right. I think 8.30 we go on. All right. You're the best, man, and hopefully we'll see you when you come back to town, okay? Thank you, guys. All right. Yeah. Thanks, man. Kevin Costner at 720 WGN.